about your show I'll pour praises like wine all I ask for this favor is that you're nice about mine <laughs> I won't ripple the water I won't rock any boats if you get bad tricks or mentions I won't be nasty or gloat <laughs> showbiz talk you a super praises flow <laughs> like wine Showbiz talk, you're a trooper. Was I good? You were fine. <laughs> I'll be nice about your show if you should happen to ring. If it was awful or dreadful, I'll not mention the thing. <laughs> All this for one tiny favor. All this for one tiny fee. <laughs> Namely that when I'm performing, you'll pour lots of praises on me. Showbiz talk, it's so phony. Platitudes may massage. Showbiz talk, <laughs> it's baloney. But don't forget, there's a charge. <laughs> All of these things I can offer. All of these things I can give If we become showbiz buddies Well, in each other's pockets we'll live Ha-ha! There's only one catch to remember Only one thing you should know If I find I no longer need you Then it's goodbye <laughs> So long Cheerio! <laughs> showbiz talk, it's so phony Latitude may massage Showbiz talk It's baloney But don't forget there's a charge <laughs> Showbiz talk You were super Praises flow like wine Ah, showbiz talk You're a trooper Was I good? You were fine <laughs> I'm Pisces. Yeah, it's a really good sign for a singer, dancer, actress, model like myself. <laughs> well, it shows that I'm warm, kind, considerate, generous, loving, protective, sensual, intelligent, and modest. <laughs> I don't like Leo men, though. They're all grumpers. My personal manager agent, Carlton Westgate, he says he was born under the sign of Pyrex. <laughs> Do you know why? Because he says he was a destitute baby. <laughs> He's ever so funny, Carlton. He's always making jokes, and do you know what? Jokes really make me laugh. <laughs> when I get married, uh, I think I'd ideally like my husband to be an Aquarian, you know. Kind, considerate, and generous. <laughs> well, any star sign would do, as long as he's got a golden American Express card. <laughs> well, you know, it shows you can be organised as well as generous. <laughs> well, there I am, going on about myself as usual. What about you? What credit cards have you got? <laughs> Did you know, Reggie, that some schools are still dishing out corporal punishment? Quite right, too. You've got to have some kind of a deterrent for little blighters, haven't you? I mean, caning and beating the little mites, I mean, it's barbaric. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. I thought you said capital punishment's a bad thing. Electric chair and so forth. No, I quite agree. Caning is a moral. The best way to get the message home to young people is tell them once. If they ignore that, send them to Borstal. And if they still persist, give them a short, sharp shock. Hang them. You don't think that's a bit, uh, final? What? Killing them? No, I don't think so. There's always the afterlife, isn't there? Oh, I see. You mean send them to God. Let him decide whether to cane them or not. Yeah. Yes, that's fair enough. Good evening. The fungals. Cute, furry, friendly, irrepressible, but, more than anything else, a commercial gold mine. Before we meet the fungal's creator, Andrea Stoat, let's just have a short clip from their smash hit TV show. Down your way 
Will you please welcome the lady behind the fungals, Andrea Stote. Welcome, Andrea, welcome. Andrea, tell us, where exactly did the inspiration for the fungals come from? decided what you're going to call him yet? Well, his father's always been a great Elvis fan, so we thought we'd name the baby in his memory. Oh, Elvis? No, Fatty. <laughs> so this is how it all must end? Don't punish yourself, David. We're never to see each other ever again. It's better this way. Very well, then. I'm leaving now. I'm going. I'm walking out of your life. You'll never see me again. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, Miss uh, Oh, sorry. It's the, uh, the smoke. It's very thick. Goodbye, David. What? Oh, yes, Elizabeth. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Oh, yes, as you can see, it's the smoke. It gets very, um... Well, I'll be off then. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Forever. Goodbye, David. Oh, there you are again. Thought I'd made it that time. Did you? Yes, well, it's the smoke, you know. It's very thick. Uh... Well, I'll be off. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Forever. Goodbye, David. Smoke. Look, this is the most absurd thing. You stay here and I'll leave. Forever? Yes, forever. Goodbye, Elizabeth. Wedding! 
Victoria, are you waiting for inspiration? No, I'm waiting for the postman, actually. And he's bringing something important. Uh, no, it's just that I need the envelopes. You see, if I get an idea, I'll just scrub it down on the back of an envelope. And, well, I've just finished my last one. Why envelopes? Well, it doesn't have to be envelopes. I mean, it can be anything, really. Old yoghurt cartons, cigarette packets, matchboxes. Any surface that's difficult to write on, really. Why can't you use a loose-leaf notebook? Well, I wouldn't be a proper writer then, would I? <laughs> oh, hang on. I've got an idea. Where are you going? I'm off to the pantry. I get all my best ideas and I'm sat looking at the labels. Yes, whatever your taste in humour. Whether it's lowbrow like Benny Hill or eyebrow like Benny Teeny. There's one thing upon which we all agree. Victoria Wood is a very funny woman. She is also a serious composer. At 33, she is at the peak of her career, with three television series behind her. Where does she find the inspiration for her songs? Food. Eating? No, describing it. How do you mean? Well, for example, ten minutes ago, what were we both drinking? Well, uh, I had a tea and you had coffee. No, you see, in a song that'll become a... Tetley's one cup for you and a decaffeinated hag for me. So, to a funny woman, life is just a series of brand names. Well, that's only half of it. Let me take you to the kitchen. This is where I get all the bulk of my material. I see. For example, what's that over there? Well, a blender. Well, more precisely in a song it would be. A moulin X quick chivet with pastry attachments to the anti You can just love the food. Oh. Or, you know, it's like a kettle team, doesn't it? But it in fact, it's not in a song it would be. A tea found three lines, 13 unbreakable. Easy fill, 14 copper. <laughs> so when you write some songs, looking at groceries, put them into a certain rhythm and a certain mood. You know, for example, if I, if I take some craft cheese singles, you know, it's very likely that I might write a ditty about a spinster. <laughs> if you take it a stage further and you put your cheese into your Breville toasty sandwich maker, it's very likely that the song will be dedicated to all those sunbed worshippers. <laughs> Next velvet, kind, and you're behind. So there you have it. Victoria Wood, the funny woman. Or shopping list. Yes, please. Two for tonight, please. Circles or store? Stalls. Done stalls or real stalls? Real stalls. Smoking or non-smoking? Non-smoking. Next to Fat American and talks loudly to Ralph or not? Yeah. Next to the man who spreads his arms and tries to take up armrests on both sides of his seats or not? No. Next to know it all type with a wispy beard and tweed sports jacket who's seen it all 15 times before and says all the actors' lines with them and laughs loudly in the wrong places or not. <laughs> Next to the man who continually goes backwards and forwards during the intervals because he hasn't got any cornettos and God, who wants a chalk eyes? I don't. Who wants tubs? Right, that's three. Anyone else want a pure or after all that? Can I squeeze past you again or not? Not. Next to the rustler or not? <laughs> Next to twitcher or not? <laughs> Next to the man with flatulence or not? Not. All right, that's two tickets. Four hundred pounds, please. Four hundred pounds? Oh, come on, it's worth it to avoid all that love, isn't it? is dead. 
the Liverpool comedian Arnie Littlenob died peacefully in his sleep at his country home today. Tributes continue to pour in. Arnie Littlenob. Oh! <laughs> And he had a lot, a lot of talent. I owe him a lot, you know. He taught me how to sing and how to dance and how to record really great new albums like the one of Gloria. Still a silver jubilee album and it's 24 great tracks. Now, that'll make any party go with a swing. And it's available in your shop now. Surprise, surprise. You know, folks, Arnie was like a brother to me. The brother I never had. The brother I searched for all my life. Oh, yes. And I know what a great honour and privilege it would have been to have Arnie as a guest on my new series, Tarby and Friend. Yes, folks, Tarby's back. Saturdays at nine. Be there. Oh, ho. Is that the one? Arnie Littlelong. I gave him his first exposure. Willie of the week. <laughs> Arnie would be the first person to believe that his passing on will leave room for fresh, new, exciting talent. Like me. And I am hugely available. The comedian Arnie Littlenock, who died earlier today. No doubt aware that uh, Anthony Weinbach, Britain's zaniest newscaster, is now available for stag nights, hen nights, bar mitzvahs, children's parties, and finally, balloon bending speciality. Well, Marjorie's invited us up to London for Audrey's coming out. Oh, I didn't know she was a lesbian. Oh, yes, Marjorie's going to be gay. What about Simon? Oh, Simon's all right. He's not a bit interested in women. Come in. Oh. Good camp with the boys, Penshaw? Oh, yes, thank you, Scout Mistress. <laughs> Penshaw, how long have you been in charge of the Vixen Scout Patrol? Oh, six months. And in that time, how many of the boys have been eaten by the rest of the troop? Thirty-seven. And can you give me any explanation for this remarkable number of acts of cannibalism? Hearty appetites. It's not a very impressive record, is it, Penshaw? What, you mean you think we should have eaten a few more? Penshaw, acts of cannibalism, especially among boy scouts, leaves a rather nasty taste in people's mouths. It's probably the woggles. Penshaw, I know you're facing a rather silly question. Why exactly did you have to boil Ripley in a large pot? It was a bit stringy. We didn't think we'd casserole very well. Pencil, I thought I made it perfectly clear before you left. No more boys to be eaten. Eating all of the boys around the campfire? It's a sort of tradition. No, it's not, Pencil. It's in our patrol. Anyway, I've written a letter to his parents. Oh. To whom it may concern. Your only son has been eaten by the rest of the scout troop. Oh, that's marvellous, Central, that is. His parents will have a fit when they read this. Their only son eaten whilst away on camp in Wiltshire. Think of the shock. They must be told gently. Mm. I know. How about if we wrote, your son went for a swim with some potatoes and may not be coming home? <laughs> How about, uh, your only son has been completely nibbled to death, but don't worry, here's the recipe. No, Pencil. How about if we wrote, uh, your son has been completely eaten by the rest of the patrol, but don't worry, there are a few carrots left. Shut up, Pencil! You tried to help. Well, please don't. Heaven knows our motto is be prepared, but I think even Baden Powell would have drawn the line at eating a fellow scout just outside the visor. I suppose it would help if I wrote a note to Mrs. Ripley saying how tasty. No. Or that we couldn't find the tin opener. We're all a bit peckish. Shut up, Pencil. Go away now. Go away. Leave this to me. Dear Mrs. Ripley, please find enclosed your son's practical cannibalism badge. <laughs> this man looks his age, but we are going to introduce him to Ancient 2000, the new hair colouring that lies about your age. Ancient 2000, for the man with real hair who wants to look like he's wearing a wig. What do you think you're doing? Oh, sorry, I was bored. You do feel like I'm not going to get this off in a million years. Just come. 
Thank you.